Okay, I am going to attempt to do a commentary of my 34 minute, 38 second world record run. Uh, try to explain why I did things the way I did. Um, possibilities maybe for improvement in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be playing back the video and uh, commenting on it as we go and hopefully maybe just pausing it at places and things like that. Um, so a couple of things or what I can think of off the top of my head right now is encounters are determined off of, it seems like number of steps on encounter tiles uh, since the last reload, right? So reload can be off of a quick save that you do through the menu and then you quit out and reload, or it can be an auto save after a battle or something like that where you quit out and reload. Um, Certain things advance the count. Um, I have found that, well, obviously steps on encounterable tiles advance the count. Um, using herbs advances the count. Um, trying to think what else does advance the count. Most spells don't. Um, heal may or may not, I'm not sure, on the, on the overworld. Um, doing things in battles doesn't advance the count at all. Um, I don't believe torches advance the count, even in dungeons and things like that. Uh, spells like glow and things like that, equipping items, uh, unequipping items in dungeons, things like that, I don't believe advance the count. Um, one thing you'll know, you'll see uh, in my in Sherlock is I use an agility seed on a specific tile and that is to avoid an encounter there. So the next step would have been an encounter. By using the agility seed on the specific tile, it counts down the last step without me taking it and it doesn't give me the encounter. Um, now that changes the encounters afterwards, which happened to work out okay. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Starting a new file, um, Z is or Z is a short name that uh, gives you the stack build you need. Ah, this was a messed up run to begin with, so I restart. I forgot to start the uh, the timer I think, at that for that one. Set for a file name, fast message speed, audio, default audio, doesn't really matter there. Chess. Not absolutely perfect, but pretty good. Pretty good movement in the castle overall. So movement. You want to get your cornering uh, as quick as possible. You don't want to bump, obviously. Um, and you don't want to pause when you do corners. So you have to... I tend to do my inputs um, a little bit before you actually get to the tile you want to turn at. So that it doesn't waste any time on corners. Here I'm just mashing A to buy all the herbs. Um, once I get all the herbs, I hit A to buy. And as soon as buy gets uh, selected, I start spamming or tapping on the down button to get me down to torch and then A to select. Um, I think here I double tap and go to the dragon scale before I buy all my torches. Um, if I hadn't, if I had gotten all my torches, um, as soon as I hit the buy button I would have tapped up. Well, I think I did there, right? So it worked out okay. So spam A until you get to buy. Okay. Drop the bamboo spear. Uh, select use to equip the dragon scale, and then use the Camaro wing to get to exit out. Hold A on attacks to not waste any time. Spam B to get out. Um, B won't open any menus afterwards. Walk across. Flee, you're trying to time pressing up or down as quick, uh, you know, as early as possible there. Here you're just menuing as quick as possible. Quick save. 
I found that with the digital version, it's extremely difficult to exit out before it saves. So as soon as you hit save, you know, by the time my thumb can get to the home button and get me out of there, it's already saved. I have the digital version. I have not managed to scroll my save, no matter how fast I go. Three torches on the scorpion. That's been in the run for quite a while. Medical herb. Um, I want to enter the swamp at the last tile there to reduce the number of swamp tiles because they're slower to walk on. Seven steps down. Some people do one right and then six down. So it's seven steps total. That's probably better because you can see the right wall on the exit earlier. Or better. I just haven't incorporated that. Small improvement. Two torches. Level three. Spamming, I, t I tend to spam B to get through menus and things like that, because when I get out of the menu, it doesn't open menus or anything like that. A few bumps. <clears throat> Clean the encounter. And walk to Rimaldar. So here, you know, movement wasn't perfect, but I'm usually waiting for that the key vendor to move to the right anyways. Um, if I'm really quick, you could um, catch him on the left tile or the left counter space there before he moves across. Um, it might save a bit of time, but it's harder to exit afterwards. So it's for me, it's mostly a wash. So I usually just wait for him to move over. <clears throat> so... Spamming A to buy six keys, you should hear the chime six times. After the sixth chime, I start spamming B uh, for the seventh chime and exiting out. And that should be in the 80s of gold for the last one. There I have six. Spamming B, get out. Get out of town. Quickly back in. Unnecessary bump. So with seeds, um, you tend to almost always get the optimal value for the seed if you take one encounter step after you get the seed itself. So I just pick up the Camaro wing here and I picked up a seed of resilience uh, in, the, uh, in the right chest of the key vendor store. I took one step outside the town when I exited and came back in so I can use the Seed of Resilience here to get a plus four. Uh, there are other places you can use it as well and other people do it in the runs. Um, some people uh, do this seed and then the three, uh, there's three other seeds that you have just before the Sunstone in a spot in the Sunstone room to get all of them. I guess that's a little bit less menuing. That might be a tiny bit faster. So Seed of Resilience, Caroline to get out straight into the castle uh, to go to the vault and then the sun's going I'm grabbing all, there's my agility seed in the bottom, I'm grabbing it so that I have it for Sharlock to avoid and encounter. <laughs> so, uh, let me try to pause it right here, right on the wall, the end of the wall. I think that's where others tend to do all of their seeds, right? So the seed of resilience from Rimaldar, the two seeds from the vault, and then the seed that you get from the right uh, drawers in this room. And then you use them all here. Uh, it, it usually works out, but I've seen runs recorded where that hasn't worked out. So I exit out of here, take one step on the overworld map, and then do these seed three seeds on there. Uh, it might be a bit slower. It is a little awkward to take that one step. Uh, so this might be a better place to do it.
So 454. My gold is usually like a 450 or a 451. There were a bunch of bumps on the way here. So this is probably where my time save is going to come from for future runs. If nothing, if nothing changes the route. So here I'm Magic Life Life. I believe it goes 556 five, there, which is not fully optimal, but uh, good enough for to get through the slide drive. Right? So spamming A to buy, spamming up to leather suit, spamming A, spamming A, spamming A to buy, and then down, down, copper, A, 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 A. And then after the two chimes on the last one, I'm spamming B to get out of there. Spamming A until I select the in, and then spamming B to get out. Often that town person is in an awkward place. Usually I go underneath and then zigzag out. Um, ideally it's about 5 minutes uh, 50 when I'm out of town there. On a, on a great run. Uh, attack. This one will run block you if you try to run, so attacking is faster. Just running from encounters now. I like, hang on, I'm gonna back up there if I can. Right here. So you want to cut the mountain as closely as you can. Um, some people, um, you know, it's hard to do a one tile zigzag. So to get around the mountains requires a two tile zigzag or, you know, it comfortably is a two tile zigzag. So I'm trying to line myself up with that strip of bright green. And I usually just go straight down from my previous encounter from the right after the bridge, go down to the mountains, over to the green, and then a two tile zigzag to get around the mountains. Other people line up with the green before they get down here, right? So they'll move left higher up, they'll come straight down to the green strip and then two tile zigzag around the mountains. Uh, this is That's my setup. I make a mistake and go one tile further. So my encounters now are gonna be shifted by two tiles. And I do another mistake there. Now this one casts heal and takes an extra turn to get away from. It. Ideally, I'd like to avoid that one somehow in the future. Maybe taking a few extra steps and encountering that encounter in earlier to avoid to it. But I don't know if that will. I don't know. Sorry, let me back up. Where am I here? All right. So I usually encounter. That in with perfect movement, I encounter that skeleton um, two to the right and two and one up from the bridge, which gives you an awkward zigzag coming out of the uh, encounter. Since I made mistakes on my tiles on my walking, I encounter him earlier here. Right now, I'm curious if I do extra steps uh, earlier. If I encounter him so much earlier that he's in a different zone and is a different enemy. Um, maybe I'll be able to kill that enemy with one hit or just be able to run without, you know, a heal or a run block or something like that. Now, by shifting all the enemies up, that may run the risk of me getting an extra encounter before a quick save for the, uh, for the slime, uh, the slime grind. So I've encountered him a bit higher than my non-optimal route. Uh, here... Uh, I encounter was it a werewolf. Usually I'm encountering something else in the sand, right? So, just is what it is. Luckily there wasn't another encounter close enough to make a difference. So I quick save, get out. Uh, and then this is just the standard slime grind. Um, you know, standard pattern, nothing new there. I tend to use all my herbs first. I make a mistake on my walking. Uh, so normally I just go over uh, and then down two. I think it's over four and then down two. And my first battle is usually right beside the mountains. On the last bit of mountains. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as I get my slime encounters. I just I just have a pattern that works for me. The number of steps is the same, so it doesn't really matter as long as you're getting the slime encounters. Um, I tend to use all five herbs in my first five battles, and then uh, snooze, snooze, snooze. 
Um, and I still have enough health to get through all of that. And snooze is a little bit faster than healing. I'm gonna turn... I'm gonna turn the game audio down a bit. So here I'm taking my second encounter, and that's usually where I take the second encounter anyway, so I'm back to where I normally am. Herb. Yeah, so for my torches in the first two encounters of the game, and for these herbs, it's just up A, up A. Alright, so we're at the point in the route, if nothing else is found, Time saves are going to be small changes, you know, very small improvements to, to runs, or better menuing and better movement, right? So, some of my previous runs, I had a better route than the previous record holder, but my menuing and stuff was so bad and my movement was so bad that I would lose, you know, I'd be a minute behind. Um, a minute behind the record or the route an objectively better route than that. Right? So it was the last minute or so of my time save was menuing and movement. So first slime gets you all the way to level 8, I believe? Right, 8. The next slime gets you to 9. You quit out. Uh, you get 10 and 11 on these two slimes. You quit out. Two slimes to get to 12, quit out two times to get to 13. So I'm holding A on all of my attacks. Up A, up A for herbs. Down A, down A for snooze. Um, and then where you have to use your copper sword, it's up A, 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 spam. Up and spam A. Hold A. Up A, up A. Hold A for the rest of the battle. Grab the next encounter. Hold A for the first three attacks. You can hold it all the way through. This is going to be the first snooze. So after Sis, it's down A, down A. Hold A for the rest of the battle. <clears throat> Spamming B to get through. And then quit out. So if I can hear the music, I'm, I'm pretty good, right? I've never managed to go so fast that it didn't save. Here I'm spamming uh, the Square Enix and the Yuji Hori to get to the menu, and then I'm just trying to time time the menu. It's just up and eight to go through that. The This will be level 13. You get zoom, immediately go to zoom and cast it as fast as you can. Spells, press up to circle around to zoom, rather than going down, down, down. Run from this one. Uh, that'll be a run block. I, or, no. You'll kill it, but it takes longer, right? So you're just running from that one. Stay in the green all the way to uh, avoid an encounter. Clean movement. After the in, the message is very short. So you have to be ready to move. So spamming B. 
this guy can be a problem if your movement is messed up. I might mess up my movement there. If your movement is messed up in Garenham before you get into that back room, he'll try to cut you off and go left. Right, so if you're fast enough, you'll have to go left around him. If you're slow, he'll try to move left and you can just go through. So fourth, let me back up there, if I can. Okay, so we're going in. Here I need to use glow, just so I can... Routing is very important here. If you take extra steps, you're going to get more encounters, right? This is no mistakes. As soon as you take one extra step, you're getting at least one more encounter. And we don't have... The run is optimized enough now that that's too much. So I need to use Glow to get through cleanly without wasting way too much time tiptoeing through corners and things like that. So Glow overall helps me get through um, without slowing down. So I take the time loss to cast Glow, but it helps with my movement. Um, when you get in there, um, I'll, I'll explain, I'll try to explain. So I go straight up till I hit the wall then across till you hit the wall, then up, and we're going down this next hallway, uh, and it's the fourth entrance, right? So one, two, three, four, you cut the corner, and go up until you get the encounter. So I just take the encounter there, run, and then I cast blow from there. It gets a little, bit, and that's good enough for me to get through the rest of the dungeon. So we're going up to the chest, Fleeing the encounter, and as I flee the encounter, I'm spamming A to open the chest. I'm getting out, and then going to the right side, all the way down. Encounter here. So, coming out of this encounter, and there's one, the last encounter here as well. Um, I bumped the wall way too many times by trying to... Um, trying to time it by movement. Um, and we can't afford to take extra steps, so I can't hold the right button down because I'll, mi I'll miss my turn. So what I'm doing is spamming B to get out of here, taking like taking a tiny pause, and then picking the route up afterwards. So I'm spamming B, then I go. There's been way too many times I've bumped the wall and stuff there. So open the door, perfect movement through here, um, and we get an encounter three over from the stairs. Flee. <clears throat> Take the stairs. Perfect movement. Now, if we haven't had perfect movement up until this point, you will get a wolf encounter right before these stairs. I think you get it the last tile before the stairs. So you, can, you need perfect movement or else you get an encounter here and I believe you get other ones as well, one or two other ones. <clears throat> So we're going to get one more encounter down here. So this is the same thing. I'm, I'm fleeing and standing B to get out to clear everything, and then I'm continuing. Go to the chest. There we go. Took an extra step, but that's okay. at the time that I took that extra step. <laughs> when I was doing this run, I was re I was wondering why I was getting encounters on a slightly different tile. I think when I get down to the grind, I get a gold golem instead of uh, whatever I normally get. And I, I was confused for a second, not realizing I took that step in the tomb. But it doesn't really matter. I uh, took an extra step there as well. So maybe that's why. Oh, sorry, not even a gold golem is them. Death Scorpion. That's something you don't normally run into. So slightly unoptimized movement. Uh, we're quitting out. Now we have that life seed that we detoured for in the tomb. This is known to, you know, it's been in the top run for quite a while. Here we're going to take one step to the right and use it just to have it. I suppose I might be able to save it for later, but my inventory is getting large, so I may not be able to do much.
so I'm gonna back up. Or I'm gonna try to pause it right at the end of this. Okay, so normally in the regular grinds, my first encounter is one tile below there, right beside that last mountain. So I save in that bottom right, that, that two tree tile just above the mountains. That's normally where I quick save. And there are other strategies. That's normally where I quick save. Um, and my first encounter is usually that tile below me right now, right beside that small mountain. On this one, since I use, I take one step over, I use the Seed of Life, that means my encounter comes one less, right? So it's a little tricky to get there. I've made a mistake multiple times where I go across too far and I end up taking an encounter one to the right and one up from where I am, and that's a non-slime encounter and the run's over, right? So you have to be very careful here about the routing to get to that spot. Uh, and then after this, I go over to the right and do my regular up and down zigzag. Uh, when I zigzag, I always, after a battle, I always move down and then zigzag back up. And I always stop at the row I'm in right now over in the column that I that I do my zigzag in, right? So I, I just keep going up and down in that column. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. So I'm gonna move across and then zigzag down and up there and I always stop. I don't go any higher than that because this is the last slime time. Um, before you get non-slime encounters, right? So you wanna don't you don't wanna go any higher than that. So I just stay in those, you know, five or so tiles. And the slime battles are the same. So there's the two encounters. Now because I use that that seed, all of my tiles are switched over by one, right? So normally my first encounter is two tiles up from the mountains, and my second encounter is four tiles up from the mountains. And now it's, I think it's one in five or something like that. So it's a little different, this one's a little different where I'm taking the encounters. And so it's tricky, the next one is tricky because you can mess up. You can mess up. So I'm going to stop right there. So I think that is where I take my next encounter, but I have to do another zigzag to get there. Um, I want to end my... this. You need five slimes for this this grind. And this I've got two of them. Is, do I have two of them? Yeah, and I'm going to get my third here. Is that right? I can't remember now. Two more. One, hang on, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so and I have one so far. I'm about to get my second. Um, and then I'm gonna take three and four and I, ideally I want to either end or take my fourth encounter where I am right now or two tiles down from where I am. Because when I load my for my last slime, I wanna take my five or six steps and I wanna end up on the bottom row of sand on the right hand tile. And that gives me an optimal path, an optimal number of steps up to Hawksness to avoid an encounter. Right now, there are probably other options there that are the same distance from Hawksness that have a slime on those tiles uh, that would work as well. But I just, I know that one works and that's that's where my target is right now. Right, so I'm gonna run through, I'll explain it more when I get there. So this is slime number two out of five. So I'll do a save. I'll do two more slimes. I'll do a save, and then I have to get to that. So spamming I usually spam B here on these I don't know I just want to save my A button a little bit up and A and you're in so that's the encounter tile right there now I don't recall oh this that might have been four slimes maybe this is my fifth one already right I want that's where I want to end oh yeah and judging by the timer that would be my fifth because right? I'm about to hit my split so that is the tile you want to end up on.
So we're going up, cutting the corner, getting to there an exact number of steps, no encounters. So again, exact number of steps, right to the save point. Quick save, we're out, we're back in. Ah, one thing I forgot to mention, for the sl second slime grind, um, I do one snooze because uh, in the first battle because it's faster than heal. Um, you know, and I could survive a bunch of, you know, snoo using snooze instead of heal in the encounters to save more time. The problem is, is when I get to the point in Hawk's Nest there, if I don't have full health, I won't easily survive the, the Axe Knight. And I need to cast heal there, which wastes time, right? So you're better off just healing in the slime encounters and coming in with full health and taking the, the loss between snooze and heal rather than having to stop and cast heal anyways in Hawksness. So my pattern is snooze and then heal, 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 heal just to get my my HP all the way up in that bat or for the to get ready for the Axe Knight battle. Uh, the Axe Knight is easy. Um, with enough health, you're just going in and holding A. So I'm holding A the entire time. Okay, spamming A, spamming B now to get out of the menu. Bring up the menu. Now, I'm just looking here. So if I keep that life seed, I wonder if I'd be okay. I have 18 health there. I'd have six less probably at the end. Um, I might be able to hold on to it for later. So, and I do have the space here right now. So now we're going into the menu. We're selecting Erdrich's armor and equipping. As soon as we do that, it swaps Erdrich's armor and the leather suit. So the leather suit goes into that exact spot that I'm already in. And that allows me to immediately select it and then throw it away. And I believe I need that space for some reason. I think it's because I'm keeping the seat of agility that I need that space. On a previous run, well, it doesn't matter. We'll, uh, so I do need to throw it away. All right, so I'm immediately throwing it away. Spamming B to get out of the menus and then exiting as quickly as I can. Uh, out of out of Hawksness as efficiently as you can. No extra movements. This allows me to get all the way down to the slime 2 encounter. Um, Another thing to note now, now we have Erdrich's armor and we are heal walking every time. The heal walk is sufficient that we can snooze through all of the rest of the encounters, right? So all, I think it's nine metal slimes. You can snooze all of them and you'll survive. I'm going to pause it there. So coming out of Hawksness, we take that encounter at the bottom. Um, my markers, uh, ideally I want to finish a second slime on a, on a save right at the very last mountain spot um, where, the, where the forest curves there uh, on that single mountain, right? That sets me up for my token walk afterwards. Um, so usually I'm trying to set myself up so that after every second slime, I'm just there. And if I do that, when I reload, my first encounter will be on the bridge. And then to set up my second encounter on that spot, I walk left by one, two, I about four or so tiles. So that lines me up, not with the bottom. Well, I'll, I'll explain that point, right? So now I'm just kind of making my way down as I take my slime encounters. And um, 
work my way to that spot. You'll see the pattern that I do. So we took our, we killed the first slime. I'm gonna pause, oh. So I didn't quite make it. Um, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna back up. So the first slime out of Hawksness was slime number two. That one I took the encounter just before the lake. That's just where it happens, right above the lake. Then I take my six steps and I take my second, in my I reload, take my six steps, take my encounter, which happens to be here. And then I'm just adjusting my route to get it, to get it all set up. So I'm going to pause it where, oh, so right about there, I'm starting to make my way back, but I'm basically still on the tile as far as I went to this, uh, on this run. I want to be one more to the left. That's the that's kind of my marker for making it back to the mountain on an exact number of steps. So I've realized that I've cut it short, and so I take an extra wiggle to have the right number of steps. Right there. So that puts me on the tile. So this is not exact. This is just my way of marking where I am in, the, in my battles. Um, you know, it's just just for some consistency, right? The less, there's so much menuing and stuff in the, in the battles or in the, in the run, the less confusion you add, the better, right? So exiting out. <clears throat> First encounter on the bridge. You get level 16 after the a first encounter, right? So I get it on the bridge. Okay, there. So that is where I stop. It's that first bump of mountains off of, from the bottom, right? So that is exactly where you want to be. And then if you go right all the way, that'll line you up with the mountains, right? So if you take your first encounter on the bridge, you go left to that spot and then all the way right and you'll get your encounter on the last square. So that's how I do my group. So we're level 16. It takes five slimes to get to level 17. So we'll finish this slime, and then there's two more sets of two to get to level 17. So clear the menu, save out, or exit out. It, you know, you're running, you're using the autosave. Something with that life seed that I usually use, you know, just before I start my second grind. I think in this grind, you get down to 8 HP. Right, so minus the 6 from not taking the seed, I'd still be okay in 2 health. put me at 1 HP there, I could still, I could still take the life seed with me, as long as I have the inventory space, I might try that next. So this should, is my level 17? No. So I still have two more slimes after this. Right, so, back in Hawksness, I had one free space. 
So if I... Oh, there's my level 17. Okay, yeah, right, there's still the walk to the token. So this walk was an exact route. In order to roll properly on the strength seed in coal. I still use this route here, it's just good to mark where my route is. Um, since I'm quick saving before Sherlock, and uh, that allows me to use the strength seed one step off of my quick save there, so I don't have to worry about the route anymore. Uh, I would probably try to use the, the life seed there if I were to carry it with me. Anyways, my train of thought was in Hawksness, I have that one free space. So if I put my life seed there, I definitely need to discard my leather suit in order to pick up the token. Uh, now, that means my inventory is full. So I don't think I can pick up the strength seed then at that point, right? So that may not work. So holy protection, um, that is just a spot uh, I've seen another runner use, so that it works good enough for me. You're gonna need two holy protections here anyways, so these markers are good enough. Here I just take any old route because the route doesn't matter anymore to Cole. Uh, it's just easier for me to get through. One last holy protection here to set up um, before I stay at the inn here. So we're going to grab the seed. Normally you would immediately use it for a plus two strength uh, if you've done the route correctly. But since I save it for the quick save at Sherlock, it's actually a plus three. Um, it doesn't matter. It's still the same number of turns on the Dragon Lord and things like that. So it doesn't help us right now, but maybe it will in the future. I'm going to back up. So I do a zigzag, so you can see my corners, there's, they're very smooth. Um, here I do a zigzag and there's a slight, you know, chatter, right? There's a slight delay. That's what you're trying to avoid with your cornering, right? And it, over the course of a run, it can make a big difference. Right there, right there, there was a, there was a, a small pause. So I don't know if you saw that, but there's, um, there is a difference. Right, spamming B now to get out of the menu. I'm generally I'm spamming B on uh, any dialogue. If it's something I need to buy, I need to spam A to get to the buy. Two steps and then holy protection there. Uh, that just sets up my marker well for the next one. Here I'm just grazing along the edge here and then going straight down to the mountain and holy protection again. I am going to check here, if I don't Holy Protection there, how many steps can I take before needing Holy Protection again? That might shift the encounters in the Swap Cave here, which might reduce. Here I'm clean from two separate encounters. If I can get that down to one, that's a time save. Now I don't have Glow, I'm just doing the best I can to get through there. Still have Holy Protection. Um, the green space here is a good marker to cast the next one. With perfect movement, this will get you all the way to the rainbow drop and then um, into the narrow path at the bottom of the mountains here. So right here on the way out is where you can cast the next Holy Protection. I'm not sure where I cast in this run. So by casting on that green space and perfect movement into um, into the rainbow drop here, I'll show you, if I, if I don't get it in the run here, I'll show you exactly where you can get to. Oh, bump. So you can get one space further with perfect, uh, perfect um, movement. Right, so I went over one, so that's an extra one over and then two to come back. So normally this would have worn off two spaces down from here, so I could have gone to that two tree tile with perfect movement to get there. And when I say perfect movement, it's number of steps. It's not timing or frame perfect or anything like that. The timing doesn't matter, you're just going as fast as you can. Uh, it's just number of steps. So 
slight time loss here. Holy protection. Um, my next cast is based off of the previous world record holders run. In their run, they cast their holy protection two off of this mountain. Um, I can make it almost, I stay on this row and I can make it almost to that green spot um, until I need the next one. But since I cast one tile earlier and, and whatnot, uh, I think I'm going to cast a little early here. So right there, cast Holy Protection. This will get me slightly across the bridge. So run all the way up. And where the Holy Protection runs out here can affect the encounters from here to Sherlock. So I don't have that optimized yet for an exact, you know, exact spot to run out of Holy Protection. <coughs> Uh, it can be nice. I'm going to rewind there. It can be nice. So my Holy Protection runs out right as I'm turning the corner. On a previous run, I happened to switch from pressing left to pressing down right when that message came up and it immediately went away. It was really smooth. So that is a nice, convenient place for it to um, wear off. Um, I didn't get the, the smooth transition on this run, though. So it could be really good if it's timed well. So, you, this is an immediate run. Now, things I've seen in this path here, I have seen a blocked run by a werewolf on the first encounter. I've seen uh, knights that run block you. You know, I've seen up to three encounters between here and my uh, quick save. I quick save on the last, uh, the last ladder. Um... So you can get all kinds of things. I think that this is the only encounter I get. I might get one more on the way. So this is part, this is you know reasonably good. So right there, save on the bridge. Get out one step forward, and I'm using my strength seed and getting a plus three. Right. Ideally, I'd love to have my life seed here, but I don't think I have the space to carry it uh, with the. Uh, with the token and everything. So, uh, cast the using life seed, entering. Um, first encounter, so if everything's done correctly, first encounter after using the strength seed will be in line with the, you know, that second entrance, the yellow top of the wall. Um, I'll back up. Right. If you don't use the seed, it'll be one, one further down. Right, so if that if I get that encounter, so this is a snooze uh, flee to get out. Everything else is flee. Now with this all set up, my agility seed usage in the U-shaped hallway will be on the second torch. This menu there. Right, so there are small mistakes in this run for further time save, but overall it's pretty pretty clean. Right, there's no routing errors. Um, here I'm trying to get as far as I can without using glow. So some of my cornering isn't the best couple of bumps, but I need glow. Glow really helps me in the U-shaped hallway to set up. See, I stop there to, to make sure I don't take extra steps on that corner. And I'm not comfortable with going around this corner. I'm, at this point I've had a good run, I just want to use glow there. I need to keep Glow alive to make it around the corner cleanly in the U-shaped hallway so that I can use my agility seat at the right time. So I want to make it about halfway around that room, use Glow before I screw up, and then Glow should keep me through till I can use the agility seat. Alright, so perfect walking, no extra steps. Um, if you screw up, you're going to get an encounter before those stairs there, and, you know, runs over, right? There's probably other encounters as well. Um, so, sword. Ideally, you want to limit your menuing, right? So, I would probably equip the sword. The, equipping the sword doesn't matter. It doesn't affect encounters or anything like that. Um, to limit menuing, you're probably going to be equipping the sword when you use the agility seed. I don't remember whether I do that in this battle or not. So, second torch, equipping the sword, using the Seed of Agility, 
skipping the stone golem double run block. Here it's a flea and we're out. Clean all the way through now. Until, you know, two-thirds of the way through the bottom floor, we're going to get another one of those armored knight encounters. So we're clean. So ideally, my life seed, if I could keep it, it would move this encounter up by one. So I'm going to get the encounter on that top grass tile. And coming out of that encounter, the movement is really difficult to do smoothly. If I could use the life seed and shift that encounter up to the sand tile, that would make it a lot easier. But I don't think I have the inventory space for it. So there's the encounter. Flee and you're out. And then you're going straight to the quick save before the dragon. Spamming B now. You don't have to actually move down to the no command. You can hit B. Right, so I'm spamming B to get through there. And then this is the standard pattern that's in every one. Right, so Dragonlord 1 and Dragonlord 2. If we could find another critical for Dragonlord 2, that would be amazing. <laughs> I usually just spam B here, I don't know if it really matters. So mid heal is down A, up A. Hold A for attacks, there's your critical. And you're just doing your, uh, so, so yeah. Mid heal down A, up A. Attack is hold A, and then there's one heal near the end, which is down A, A. So usually while I'm doing this fight, I don't have the pattern absolutely memorized to the point where I'd be confident during a run. I pull up a, I pull up the list of moves and keep track of where I am. At this point, if I have a good run going, I don't want to do something stupid right? or limit my chances of doing something stupid. In the original world record, I actually, before I was realizing you could spam B on the dragon lord, I actually chose yes twice and it was hilarious. It was frustrating but hilarious, you can only help but laugh. B, B, B to get out of there. Uh, I think there's more to clear. I think I'm still spamming B. Spamming. I, I usually spam Y to bring up the menu, going to zoom, hold up to go to the castle, clean movement to the king, and spamming A to get through the, the, the dialogue. Getting ready to stop the timer as soon as he finishes his message. <laughs> so that's the run. If you look at my splits, you know, the second half is very, very clean, or quite clean. My time save, based off of my gold splits, are, you know, going to be in the first half of the run, right? I'm a few seconds behind after the first split, right? That's just bumping walls, you know, you know movement, you know, corners that are, that are slow, uh, maybe the odd miss menu, but no major, major problems. I'm five seconds behind, halfway through the run. Ideally, you know, that's where my time save is going to be if there's any more. If there's no, if there's no rub improvements. Um, a couple things I'll add as general comments I put in the Discord as well is... I don't understand why the run... 
where the walk up to Garenham is so clean. Um, in the world record, in the 3510 previous world record run, they take a route uh, above the mountains, and it's the same number of up movements and left movements to get to Garenham. It's just as often movement-wise as, as this one was. But for some reason, you avoid an extra encounter by going under the mountains and zigzagging your way up through the green space. So I don't know. I don't know what, why there's a difference in tiles between those two routes. Right. So there, I, I'm suspecting there are some special overworld tiles that don't that don't uh, give encounters. But I I don't know where they are, how to find them. I don't know whether there are extra ones around that we could. You know, that could be utilized. Um, this is about all I have. I don't have much else in my bag of tricks. So, this is, you know, further improvements on this route is just cleaner menuing, cleaner movement, uh, grinding out a couple of seconds. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll stop there.